How's it going guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you're new here, welcome. So today what we're going to be doing is starting off a series of videos for developing a uh, web service or web application using the Go programming language and specifically uh, using the hexagonal architecture model. Now, what we're going to do, what we're going to tackle in this video is just kind of setting up our our directories and packages and everything and, and getting started with the project. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into it. What I like to do is, and a lot of people like to do is, is declaring their CMD and PKG packages and their main.go files. Package main, func main, very simple stuff. Now remember, the reason why we, we do this, uh, we set up our main.go instead of CMD is just in case we, <clears throat> we want our application to do something else. So let's say we want, it, we want our application's functionality in a web service or web server and also a command line interface. This allows us to do this in a very uh, easy way. Uh, all we have to do is just provide another um, entry point to our application in here and when we do uh, go run main.go instead of uh, passing in this file we pass in the other file um, that also accesses the rest of our services. So <clears throat> with that being said um, let's think about our PKG package now. So in here, um, the whole point of hexagonal architecture is to is to uh, make our our web service or whatever we're building completely agnostic to any domain or um, yeah any any domain really and any sort of like business. Um, so what do I mean by that? I mean, we should really focus more on uh, what our, our application is doing versus what things are in there. And we should also try to avoid like amb ambiguous uh, things as much as possible. So I think a good example is would be uh, basic CRUD. Um, there will be CRUD in this for those of you who don't know that's create read update and delete operations inside of our service um, so I'll just go ahead and create those and I like to name it I like to make them um, reading adding update and deleting packages you can name whatever you want but this is how Katzian does it and how I like to do it as well So yeah, what we want is whenever somebody looks at our, our code in our application, they know exactly where to go for everything. So if they, you know, if they're looking for, if, if we need to make an update somewhere um, in updating a user or something, we, we know exactly where to go uh, in the updating directory. And, and yeah, with that in mind, um, We'll also be implementing a router inside of this application. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we do that, we have to think about this. If you think about it, our router isn't actually, doesn't actually fall in any of these packages. It's, it's actually supposed to be its own package since it's implementing all of these. So we'll make an HTTP package and a REST package since this is a RESTful service. And the reason we do this is because same idea as our main.go and CMD um, discussion earlier. Um, if we want to set up a different a different way for our, our application to run um, like let's say a, a SOAP service or GraphQL or whatever, it doesn't really matter. We can have all of those different uh, configurations 
and services set up in here and that allows our application to be to our application to be truly modular so with that being said let's move on to creating our handler.go file which is going to be where all of our endpoints are meaning whenever I want somebody to whenever they they want to know where all of my my endpoints for all of these services all of these packages are they'll they'll go to our handler.go file so what do we want this handler.go file to do well we want it to initialize a router and give it back to us because we're gonna run it later inside of our main.go file so we'll call that init handlers this is actually returning a mux.router I think it's called let me just double check uh, yep pointer to mux.router okay and let's initialize our router here and that is not auto importing real quick I totally forgot um, we should probably initialize a dependency manager inside of our application so if you haven't watched my previous videos uh, or my previous video on goal modules it's pretty simple all you need to do is um, initialize in the main directory a go mod file and you do it by passing in this command followed by uh, your repository for your project so I already have oh this should be candy shop candy shop yeah I think that's right let me go over yeah candy shop Cool, so my go mod file is initialized with the right version of, of go and everything. So now everything should, yep, it automatically imported. For now, let's just go ahead and return this router. This should be function, there we go. And also, let's just set up a quick handler func. Let's call it slash API slash and then the handler func that we want to pass in. Let's call it welcome handler dot methods get. All right. This welcome handler isn't made yet, so let's go ahead and make that in here. This is a read function. It's, it's supposed to, uh, the user's reading something from the server, so um, handle reading.go. Also, I like to start uh, each file off with the same name that way it's just easier to read and kind of go through everything so we're gonna have a handle reading dot go a handle adding handle updating handle deleting that's gonna hold all of our handlers for our our endpoints so let's go ahead and make this handler inside of our, our handle reading package sorry file uh, rest and then funk paste that this is going to return a func of a there's http dot response writer and request http dot request all right and then we're going to do a good old json new encoder encode Set the encoder as uh, the writer. 
and we're gonna encode welcome to our candy shop alright so so far we set up our our router or right, we initialize our router um, we set up an endpoint and a welcome handler so now let's go back to our main function and call this init handlers func and serve up our router starting server on port 8080 and then here we want to do router equals was it rest in it handlers and then we will do a simple log fatal HTTP dot listen and serve Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. All right. Listen and serve um, 8080 and pass in our router. And there we go. Now we should be able to run our application and see what we got. So let's go ahead and do that. Go run CMD, make that go. Cool, so our service is running. And real quick before we check that endpoint, let's just go over everything that we did. We set up packages that we'll go over in the future videos for the actual functionality of our application. That way we can, we know what, what our application does just by looking at its, at its file structure. Um, it also makes things a whole lot easier to read and navigate and modular and reusable so with that being said let's go ahead and hit our endpoint oh it was uh, slash api slash and there we go everything's running fine and that is the main idea of hexagonal hexagonal architecture and part one to this video series. Later on, we're gonna be adding on to each one of these uh, different operations inside of the application. And hopefully you would have learned a lot by the end of it. So yeah, uh, make sure to check out the GitHub repository that will be linked in the description below. So yeah, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below what you think, what you would like to see and Share, share this video with some of your friends or your coworkers, you know, and choose a new architecture maybe. Um, I like it. I, I've enjoyed working with this so far. And with that being said, I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.